Hello children. So far we have learned lesson 1 nutrition in plants. We saw about 4 video lessons. Now today we are going to read the textbook and understand better. Reading is very important as it helps us to acquire more knowledge. Now let's start reading the lesson. Lesson 1 Nutrition in Plants, Textbook Reading Practice. Lesson 1. Nutrition in Plants. As I am reading, please follow. In class 6, you learned that food is essential for all living organisms. You also learned that, start underlining from here, carbohydrates, proteins, fats, Vitamins and minerals are components of food. These components of food are necessary for our body and are called nutrients. All living organisms require food. Plants can make their food themselves but animals including humans cannot. They get it from plants or animals that eat plants. Thus, underlying from here, humans and animals are directly or indirectly dependent on plants. Bujo wants to know how plants prepare their own food. 1.1 Mode of Nutrition in Plants Plants are the only organism that can prepare food for themselves by using underline water, carbon dioxide and minerals. The raw materials are present in their surrounding. The nutrients enable living organism to build their bodies, to grow, to repair damaged parts of their bodies and provide the energy to carry out life processes. Now start underlining. Nutrition is the mode of taking food by an organism and its. Now continue to read. Utilization by the body. Underline that part of the sentence also. The mode of nutrition in which organisms make food themselves from simple substances is called autotrophic. Auto Self, underline, tropes, nourishment, underline, nutrition. Therefore, plants are called autotrophs, animals and most other organisms take in ready-made food prepared by the plants. They are called heterotrophs. Heteros means other, underline. Peheli wants to know why our body cannot make food from carbon dioxide, water and minerals like plants do. Now we may ask where the food factories of plants are located. Whether food is made in all parts of a plant or only in certain parts. How do plants obtain the raw materials from the surrounding? How do they transport them to the food factories of the plants? 1.2 Photosynthesis Food making process in plants Underline Leaves are the food factories of plants. The synthesis of food in plants occur in leaves. Therefore, all the raw materials must reach there. Water and minerals present in the soil are absorbed by the roots and transported to the leaves. Carbon dioxide from air is taken in through the tiny pores present on the surface of the leaves. Underline these. These pores are surrounded by guard cells. Such pores are called stomata. 
Now let's read from the blue box. Cells. You have seen that buildings are made of bricks. Similarly, the bodies of living organisms are made of tiny units called cells. Cells can be seen only under the microscope. Some organisms are made of only one cell. The cell is enclosed by a thin outer boundary called the cell membrane. Most cells have a distinct centrally located spherical structure called the nucleus. The nucleus is surrounded by a jelly-like substance called cytoplasm. Buju wants to know how water and minerals absorbed by roots reach the leaves. Water and minerals are transported to the leaves by the vessels which run like pipes throughout the root, the stem and the branches and the leaves. Underline till here. They form a continuous path or passage for the nutrients to reach the leaf. You will learn about transport of materials in plants in chapter 11. Paheli wants to know what is so special about the leaves that they can synthesize food but other plants, sorry, other parts of the plant cannot. The leaves have a green pigment called chlorophyll. It helps leaves to capture the energy of the sunlight. This energy is used to synthesis, prepare food from carbon dioxide and water. Since the synthesis of food occurs in the presence of sunlight, it is called photosynthesis. Photo, light, synthesis to combine. So, we find that chlorophyll, sunlight, carbon dioxide and water are necessary to carry out the process of photosynthesis. Any underline? It is a unique process on the earth. The solar energy is captured by the leaves and stored in the plant in the form of food. Thus, sun is the ultimate source of energy for all living organisms. This sentence is very important. Can you imagine the earth in the absence of photosynthesis? In the absence of photosynthesis, there would not be any plants. The survival of almost all living organisms directly or indirectly depends upon the food made by the plants. Besides, oxygen is which is essential for the survival. Of all living organisms is produced during photosynthesis. In the absence of photosynthesis, life would be impossible on the earth. During photosynthesis, chlorophyll containing cells of leaves in the presence of sunlight, use carbon dioxide and water to synthesize carbohydrates. The process can be represented as an equation. Carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll gives carbohydrates plus oxygen. This equation is very important. Now let's read from the blue box. Besides leaves, photosynthesis also takes place in other green parts of the plant, in green stems and green branches. The desert plants have scale or spines like leaf to reduce loss of water by transpiration. These plants have green stems which carry out photosynthesis. During the process, oxygen is released. The carbohydrates ultimately gets converted into starch. The presence of starch in leaves indicates the occurrence of photosynthesis. 
The starch is also a carbohydrate. Bujo has absorbed some plants with deep red, violet or brown leaves. He wants to know whether these leaves also carry out photosynthesis. Activity 1.1 Take two potted plants of the same kind. Keep one in the dark or in a black box for 72 hours and other in the sunlight. Perform iron tests with the leaves of both the plants as you did in class 6. Record your results. Now leave the pot which was earlier kept in the dark in the sunlight for 3 to 4 days and perform the iron test again on its leaves. Record your observation in your notebook. The leaves other than green also have chlorophyll. The large amount of red brown and other pigments mask the green color. Photosynthesis take place in these leaves also. I underline the line of the sentence. Uh, leaves other than green also have chlorophyll. You often see slimy green patches in ponds or in other stagnant water bodies. These are generally formed by the growth of organism called algae. Can you guess why algae are green in color? They contain chlorophyll which gives them the green color. Algae can also prepare their own food by photosynthesis. Any underline? Synthesis of plant food other than carbohydrates. You have just learned that plant synthesis carbohydrates through the process of photosynthesis. Underline, the carbohydrates are made of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. These are used to synthesize other components of food. But proteins are nitrogenous substance which contain nitrogen. From where do the plants obtain nitrogen? Recall that nitrogen is present in abundance in gaseous form in the air. However, plants cannot absorb nitrogen in this form. Soil has certain bacteria that converts gaseous nitrogen into a usable form and release it into the soil. These soluble forms are absorbed by the plants along with water. Also, you might have seen farmers adding fertilizers rich in nitrogen to the soil. In this way, the plants fulfill their requirements of nitrogen along with the other constituents. Plants can then synthesize components of food other constituents. Plants can then synthesize components of food other than carbohydrates such as proteins and fats. One point three other modes of nutrition in plants. There are some plants which do not have chlorophyll. They cannot synthesize their food. How do they survive and from where do they derive nutrition? Like humans and animals, such plants depend on the food produced by other plants. Please underline. These use the heterotropic mode of nutrition. Look at figure 1.5. Do you see yellow tubular structures spinning around the stem and branches of a tree? This is a plant called Cascata, Amber Bill. It does not have chlorophyll. It takes ready-made food from the plant. On which it is climbing. 
The plant on which it climbs is called a host. And the underline, since it deprives the host of valuable nutrients, it is called a parasite. Are we and the other animals also parasites for the plants. You should think about it and discuss with your teacher. Peheli wants to know whether mosquitoes, bedbugs, lice and leeches that suck our blood are also parasites. In our video lessons we have discussed this. Have you seen or heard of plants that can eat animals? There are a few plants which can trap insects and digest them. Is it not amazing? Such plants may be green or of some other color. Look at the plant in figure 6, one, sorry, 1.6. The picture like structure is a modified part of the leaf. The apnex of the leaf forms a lid which can open and close the mouth of the pitcher. Inside the pitcher there are hair which are directed downwards. When an insect lands in the pitcher the lid closes and the trapped insect gets entangled into the hair. The insect is digested by the digestive juices secreted in the pitcher. Such insect eating plants are called insectivorous plants. Is it possible that such plants do not get all the required nutrients from the soil in which they grow? Bujo is confused. If the pitcher plant is green and carries out photosynthesis, then why does it feed on insects? You might have seen packets of mushrooms sold in the vegetable market. You may have also seen fluffy umbrella-like patches growing on rotting wood during the rainy season. Figure 1.7 Let us find out what type of nutrient they need to survive and from where they get them. Bujo wants to know how these organisms acquire nutrients. They do not have mouth like animals do. They are not like green plants as they lack chlorophyll and cannot make food by photosynthesis. Activity 1.2 Take a piece of bread and moisten it with water. Leave it in a moist warm place for 2-3 to three days or until fluffy patches appear on them. These patches may be white, green, brown or of any other color. Observe the patches under a microscope or a magnifying glass. Write down your observations in your notebook. Most probably you will see cotton like threads spread on the piece of bread. These organisms are called fungi. They have a different mode of nutrition. Kindly underline. They secrete digestive juices on the dead and decaying matter and convert it into a solution. Then they absorb the nutrients from it. This mode of nutrition in which organisms take in Nutrients in solution form from dead and decaying matter is called saprotropic nutrition. Plants which use saprotropic mode of nutrition are called saprotrophs. Fungi also grow on pickles, leather, clothes and other articles that are left in hot and humid weather for a long time. 
Paheli is keen to know whether her beautiful shoes, which she wore on special occasions, were spoiled by fungi during the rainy season. She wants to know how fungi appear suddenly during the rainy season. All this we have discussed in our video lessons. Bujo says once his grandfather told him that his white fields were spoiled by a fungus. He wants to know if fungi cause diseases also. Peheli told him that many fungi like yeast and mushrooms are useful. But some fungi cause diseases in plants, animals and humans. Some fungi are also used in medicines. During the rainy season, they spoil many things. Ask your parents about the menace of fungi in your house. The fungal spores are generally present in the air. When they land on wet or warm things, they germinate and grow. Now, can you figure what? Figure out how we can protect our things from getting spoiled. Some organisms live together and share shelter and nutrients. This is called symbiotic relationship. Kindly underline. For example, certain fungi live in the roots of trees. The tree provides nutrients to the fungus and in turn receives health from it to take up water and nutrients from the soil. This association is very important for the tree. In organism like lichen, a chlorophyll containing partner, which is an alga and a fungus, live together. The fungus provides shelter, water and minerals to the alga. And in return, the alga provides food, which is which it prepares by photosynthesis. 1.5 How nutrients are replenished in the soil? Have you seen farmers spreading manure or fertilizers in the fields or gardeners using them in lawns or in pots? Do you know why they are added to the soil? You learned that plants absorb mineral nutrients from the soil. So, their amounts in the soil keep on declining. Fertilizers and manures contain plant nutrients such as nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, etc. These nutrients need to be added from time to time to enrich the soil. We can grow plants and keep them healthy if we can find out the nutrient requirements of plants. Usually crops require a lot of nitrogen to make proteins. After the harvest, the soil becomes deficient in nitrogen. Though nitrogen gas is available in plenty in the air, plants cannot use it in the manner they can use carbon dioxide. They need nitrogen in a soluble form. Kindly underline. The bacterium called rhizobium can take atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into a soluble form. But rhizobium cannot make its own food. So it lives in the roots of gram, peas, moon beans and other legumes and provides them with nitrogen. Most of the pulses, dhals, are obtained from leguminous plants. In return, the plants provide food and shelter to the bacteria. They have a symbiotic relationship. Underline. This association is of great significance for the farmers. 
they do not need to add nitrogen fertilizer to the soil in which leguminous plants are grown in this chapter you learnt that most of the plants are autotrophs only a few plants adopt other modes of nutrition like parasitic and saprotrophic they derive nutrition from other organisms all animals are categorized as heterotrophs since they depend on plants and other animals for food can we say that the insectivorous plants are partial heterotrophs now we have completed reading the lesson now we'll look into the keywords you need to know the meaning or definition for these keywords because it will be asked for questions under give the scientific term autotrophic chlorophyll heterotrophs host insectivorous nutrient nutrition parasite photosynthesis saprotroph saprotrophic stomata what you have learnt these are key points which are important to answer your objective type questions all organisms take food and utilize it to get energy for the growth and maintenance of their bodies green plants synthesize their food themselves by the process of photosynthesis they are autotrophs plants use simple chemical substances like carbon dioxide water and minerals for the synthesis of food chlorophyll and sunlight are the essential requirements for photosynthesis complex chemical substances such as carbohydrates are the product of photosynthesis solar energy is stored by the leaves with the help of chlorophyll oxygen is produced during photosynthesis oxygen released in photosynthesis is utilized by other living organisms for their survival fungi derive nutrition from dead decaying matter they are saprotrophs plants like cascata or parasites they take food from the host plant a few plants and all animals are dependent on other others for their nutrition and are called heterotrophs after this reader exercise we have already done uh, reader exercise and question answers extended learning activities and projects here few project works are given those who are interested can do it with your uh, help of your parents or elder siblings project take a potted plant with broad leaves take two strips of black paper and cut out a small square in the centers cover a part of two leaves with these papers and secure them with paper clips keep the plant in the sunlight for 2 to 5 days observe the difference in the color of the color and the uncovered portions on the one leaf perform iodine tests on this leaf did the two parts show any difference in the results now take another leaf remove the strip and expose the covered part to the sunlight for 2 to 3 days and do the iodine test again describe your observation second one visit a greenhouse if there is one near your house near your place observe how they raise plants find out how they regulate the light water and carbon dioxide if you are not able to go and visit you can find from the internet how this greenhouse effect is done try growing a sweet potato just in water describe your experiment and observation and there is a website given if you are interested you can go there is an important fact given at the end light is too sorry light is so important to plants 
that their leaves grow in many patterns so as to catch the most sunlight so uh, so far we have completed lesson 1 we have sent the video lessons worksheets reading practice and question and answer now finally we will conduct a home test so get ready prepare for a home test all the best children